some reason, people are really having a hard time with the name of this mini. So I've just decided to rename it. That's right, this week I'm going to be bringing you a step-by-step -step guide to how I painted Judge Judy, aka the Judicia from the Indomitus box set. Um, this workup has got a couple of things in common with some of the previous workups that we've done, but it's also got some new things that you may have not seen before. So what I've done is just kind of squashed it down a little bit, made it a little bit easier to get it all on video, make it as digestible as possible. We're going to dive in some down cam footage now. You can check that out and then uh, let me know at the end what you think of my little take on Judge Judy. Okay, so we're starting out as usual with a miniature primed in black, and here's the base and the other arm as well with the temper mortis. Look at they beautifuls. Okay, here's the workup for the leather coat. Showing you all these colours at once because it's going to be a bit fluid. Zandri Dust, Mornfang Brown, Doomball Brown, Rhinox Hide, and we'll be starting out with Rhinox Hide. Now the intention here is just texture, 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 texture. If you're painting worn leather, you really want very few clean strokes, I think. You wanna basically keep it pretty much all to just nice, dashy, textural strokes. So short, fluid, linear strokes. Always, you know, kind of pick a direction and have them all sort of flowing together. Then we're gonna step up to the Doom Ball and start to kind of build on top of that. And this is very much, uh, it's, it's very similar to a highlighting process. So that's how it's gonna look after the Rhinox and the Doom Ball. But now we're gonna interrupt proceedings for just a second. We're gonna switch to some black. Pick a black, whatever black you've got that you like. And uh, we're gonna thin it right back to a glaze and we're just gonna shadow at this point. And the reason we're shadowing at this point is because as we put our highlights in, we want the context of our shadows present so that we know how much we need to push that contrast overall. If our deepest shadows aren't already in, you can't really visualize that. So now we're coming to um, the next brown in the workup. This is Mournfang now at this point. And then this is Mournfang mixed with Zandri Dust actually. It's not pure Zandri Dust. You see we start to get some of that sort of finer, worn texture in now. And then just for the very tips, this is where we use the pure Zandri Dust. We never go any brighter than just pure Zandri Dust and we really keep this just to the very last worn edges. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing for some red leather using Barracknar, Evil Sun Scarlet and Squig Orange. And I'm just gonna skip through that to be honest because it is exactly the same workup. So this is how it looks once you've done that with both the red and brown leathers. You can see we've got a little mix of both throughout the piece, looking sexy. Speaking of sexy, here's the secret weapon for that black armor. Bright turquoise from Reaper Master Paints and Iron Rack skin from Citadel. Iron Rack has a green tone to it, so it works really well to highlight turquoise. And initially we're gonna start actually with that turquoise and just a little bit of black mixed into it as well. And this is really just to help it not start off too stark. We're gonna obviously have to blend this back down anyway, but we don't wanna start off too stark because that's gonna make our job a lot harder blending back down. So if we start off with just this little mixture of turquoise and black, first of all, and building these highlights. And then you can see here, this is my black glaze now, just pushing them back into the shadows. And it's a lot easier to do this from a turquoise and black than it would be to do from a pure turquoise. We'd be pushing a lot harder. That's what you're going to have once you've just sort of got your highlights mapped in. That's just kind of informing you where you want them. Now we're going to start pushing them. And so we're just going to keep increasingly adding more and more of that iron rack skin into the turquoise and uh, pushing the highlights towards the sort of top of each main shape that we've highlighted, you know, towards the edge, towards the bit that would catch the most light. And you can see it doesn't take much build up before this really starts to get bright and starts to look pretty sexy. Now we're gonna go into some Celestra Grey and we're gonna do two different applications with this actually. Quite interesting. First of all, we're gonna use it pure as a base coat for the glove of the sword arm. And that is because this chapter, this is a custom chapter, but they have a Celestra Grey um, right arm normally. But then for the left arm, we're gonna use it as a highlight for a black leather glove. So again, we're keeping textural here, we're keeping scratchy, but 
in one hand we're using it as a highlight and in the other we're using it as a base coat. For the base coated one I'm highlighting here just with some iron rack skin mixed into some Celestra Grey. Once I've kind of picked an off white for a workup I tend to use that to highlight everything. But this is how that's going to look anyway once it's done. You can see there's a very big difference between the black highlighted with Celestra and the one that's on the main body that's pure Celestra. But we're going to shade them both with this Nuln Oil now. And really this is just to grab the texture back out of the, of the sculpt. So we'll just slap it on. And then same again on the other glove. And a little bit on the shoulder pad as well. There we go, beautiful. Retributor Armor next, we're gonna block in all of our golds. I tend to use Retributor Armor for most of my golds these days, just because the coverage on it is so good. It's just such a good place to start. So we'll get all of that quickly scribbled in. That's what it's gonna look like. So this is just really to show you the areas that I've chosen to be gold. You may make slightly different choices when you're painting this, completely up to you. But we'll get that all shaded now with some Raycon Flesh Shade. And I actually really like using the matte Raycon Flesh Shade to shade my golds. I really like golds that are sort of, you know, a little bit more faded, a little bit more dusty looking. Um, gold is a very soft metal and in battle it's going to get scuffed up real quick. Rakar Flesh is our next target. We're just going to get the face painted in here, so just being very, very careful, you know, there's a lot of extra bits of furniture added to this face, you're just going to want to look out for them. The areas where the uh, cheekbones hit the mask and the little interface plugs that are in the top of his skull. There's, there's quite a few just little spots here and there, but that's what we're going to have once we've got it all blocked in. And then with the magic of television, we can quickly get the uh, Raycon Flesh Shade in all over that, looking sexy. And then start to highlight, first of all, with the Rakar Flesh itself. And then we'll start to put just a few pinpoint highlights in with some Iron Rack Skin. There's those going in, lovely jubbly. Now we're going to grab a spot of the old Karaberg Crimson. I love this shade and I don't use it enough, so I'm going to start trying to work it in more. Uh, here I'm just going to use it mainly for his scar, but also to just get a bit of soreness around those interface plugs and just a little bit of rosiness around the sort of sides of the face. So it sort of pulls a few different duties here, but here's a nice close zoom of how that looks. You can see it's pretty pretty. Very nice, simple and quick way to do a face. The older Vallejo Metal Color Airbrush Dark Aluminium now. You've, you've seen this a million times. It's become a staple on the channel. We'll just get all the silvers blocked in with this. I really cannot recommend this paint enough. If you, I, I say this almost every video now, but if you're not using it, if it's not in your arsenal, just try it. And you'll see here, we've got all those silvers blocked in. And um, in particular, you can see that on the temper mortis, I've painted the glass areas in silver. That's going to be important for a little sort of simple effect that I wanted to apply. So we're going to grab some Druchi Violet. And uh, this is that little simple effect. You could, of course, paint this properly as glass, but this is a really nice, cool looking effect that um, anyone can do. And so I wanted to include it. So we're just going to lather this with multiple coats of Druchi Violet. We're going to keep, you know, hair drying them. And as you can see, once that builds up, you get this nice kind of faded purple look. But now I'm going to hit it also with some gloss varnish. And I'm not using Ard Coat here because Ard Coat puts on a very thick layer of gloss varnish that whilst it's very glossy, can often pick up brush strokes. I only really want sort of just a bit of reflection in this. So I'm just going to build up a couple of coats of this nice thin Vallejo gloss varnish. Uh, and then we'll run to Nuln Oil to get all of our silvers shaded. Here's that going on very quickly. You've seen Nuln Oil applied over silver a million times. I'm sure you don't need your hand held through this one. And then just some quick sort of textural highlights with our original aluminium colour. Just here and there. Okay, here's an update on how we're looking now. Things are starting to get pretty sexy. We're actually very close to done at this point. But as you can see, there are just these couple of areas of bone. I've missed the, the rib cages and the parchments and stuff. And I'm just going to quickly instant snap to those being done because you've seen me do a lot of bone and parchment recently. So there you go. 
That's now our completed miniature. Let's get it on the Lazy Susan. Let's show you what it's all about. I really hope you've enjoyed this one, folks. So there you have it. That's what I come up with for the Primaris Judicia from the new Indominus box set. I hope you like what we did there. Like I said, there were a few different things. There's a little lever work up there for the red lever that you may not have seen before. And, you know, just a couple of little shuffly interesting things. The black work up that I used for the armor is actually very similar to the ghost keel that appeared in my six tips video recently. So if you were wondering how that's done as well, then this is a good place to check that out. Anyway, folks, I hope you liked it. Please tell me what you think. Get at me in the comments and let me know how you found this recipe for the Judicia. Of course, don't forget to like the video if you liked it, to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more, and please do check out my Patreon campaign, which is linked in the description of the video, as well as catching me on social media. We have tiers on Patreon starting from as little as a dollar a month right now, and there is also a competition running at the moment. I have a bit of a painting competition with a twist running for everyone that's in my Discord community, so if you are a one dollar patreon or you want to become a one dollar patreon be sure to check that out as well there is a post for that on patreon anyway folks i'm gonna get myself out of here but until next time i'll see you soon